Welcome to the next installment in my video lecture series for managerial economics. And for this particular video, we're looking at chapter 16, in particular Q&A 16.1. And just let me read this from the textbook. Uh, sorry that I don't have this up on the screen for you, but the application I'm using to do this video, this OmniGraph sketch, really doesn't allow for uh, to put this in this text on there. It does actually allow for it, but it looks horrible. And I just thought it would be a little bit easier for me to read this out. So let me actually read to you Q&A 16.1. A government regulates a monopoly by setting a maximum price, P2. In our example, I'm going to be calling it PR for price regulated. That is below the economically efficient level, P1. For our example, that's going to be PEE for economically efficient, but above the monopoly's minimum average cost as the figure shows. How do the price, the quantity sold, the quantity demanded, and the total surplus under this regulation compare to those under optimal regulation? So if you take a look here, this is the situation when we have optimal regulation, and that is we set the price where marginal cost equals the demand curve. Where marginal cost is equal to demand, we're producing where marginal cost is equal to price, and that is economically efficient. So that gives us the economically efficient price level and the economically efficient quantity being produced. So make sure you remember that, that if you're asked anything about uh, economically efficient output level, it's where it's the price and output where marginal cost is equal to the demand curve, i.e. where marginal cost is equal to the price. Moving forward, we know that the, monop the regulator is going to set a maximum price. And we can see here, here is the maximum price, PR. All right, and you can see here that by setting this maximum price, what the regulator has done has actually impacted the shape of the demand curve. Our original demand curve was this linear demand curve right here. But by setting a regulated price, what the new demand curve is going to look like, or what sometimes I like to refer to as the operational demand curve, the demand curve is going to be horizontal at the regulated price until it hits the demand curve. So it's going to be this section right here. We move horizontally till we hit the original demand curve, and then it becomes the actual original demand curve. So the demand curve below the regulated price still exists, but for prices above that, the demand curve is now the regulated price that the regulator sets. So what you see highlighted here, let me highlight that again on and off so you can see it. That highlighted section, those sections you see there are the operational parts of the demand curve, the parts of the demand curve that we are going to be concerned with as part of this problem. We well, have to realize that when we have a linear demand curve, that, that marginal revenue is a function of that demand curve. So when we had the original demand curve here, here's our original demand curve, that marginal revenue was a function of that demand curve. All right, now that we've impacted the demand curve, that's going to change the shape of the marginal revenue curve. So make sure you realize that number one, when these regulations occur, you're impacting the shape of the demand curve. And once you impact the shape of the demand curve, that causes the marginal revenue curve, the shape of, uh, the, shape of the marginal revenue curve to be changed. So let's move further on here. And you can see here that this is now, that highlighted area is now our marginal revenue curve. If you realize that that horizontal part of the price regulated, that horizontal part looks very much like what? It very much looks like the demand curve in perfect competition. And if you remember, when you have a horizontal demand curve, i.e. when you're in perfect competition, when that occurs, the demand curve is the marginal revenue curve. So for our regulated example here, that horizontal section is not only the demand curve, it is the marginal revenue curve. So it is the marginal revenue curve until we move horizontally to the original demand curve. And then you see 
that vertical dotted section, the dis, dis, discontinuity of the marginal revenue curve, and then the remainder of our original marginal revenue curve is operational. So make sure you realize that, that by placing this regulation in place, this price regulation, you're changing the demand curve, which means you're changing the marginal revenue curve. And the marginal revenue and the demand curve uh, are going to be the same at the regulated price until we hit the demand curve. And then for quantities past that point, the original marginal revenue curve is going to be operational. So that's this is going to be our marginal revenue curve moving forward to do our analysis. Now, as you remember, again, this firm is a profit maximizer. Even though it is being regulated, it wants to maximize its profits under the same conditions where marginal cost is equal to marginal revenue. So the profit maximizing condition is going to be where marginal cost is equal to marginal revenue. So where marginal cost and marginal revenue intersect one another, that is going to be our profit maximizing output level. So that's going to be the quantity that maximizes profits given this regulatory scheme. So where marginal cost is equal to marginal revenue. Okay? So make sure that you realize that, that we're still going to be maximizing profits in this, in this particular situation and that the, the, we're going to still going to get a, use, a solution using marginal cost is equal to marginal revenue. It's just that the marginal, the portion of the marginal revenue curve that we're going to be concerned with is also the demand curve. It's the horizontal section. All right. The final thing that we want to take, at, take a look at, and also we want to realize what's going to hap happen to demand well, we also have to put in place here what is going to occur here. So at that regulated price, this is how much this is going to be the regulated quantity, but that's going to be actually QD. So the difference between QD and QR, this is going to be the shortage or the excess demand as your textbook refers to it because at that price people want to buy QD but at that price the monopolist is going to maximize profits at QR so people are going to want to buy QD but the monopolist is only producing QR so this is going to cause a shortage or excess demand and finally what we want to take a look at is what are the social welfare impact, i.e. what happens to total surplus and what happens to consumer and producer surplus? Well, the first thing I want you to realize is that there's going to be some dead weight loss. I've highlighted that black triangle right there. That black triangle represents dead weight loss. So we have dead weight loss. And why do we have dead weight loss? Because output has been restricted. This is the output level that's economically efficient, but here is the output that the monopolist is going to produce given that it's a profit maximizer. So anytime you see a reduction in output, you're going to see a reduction in consumer surplus because that's output that is not being produced and consumed. So it's not producing, it's not causing, not, I would say producing consumer surplus or not generating consumer surplus, but it's also not generating uh, consumer surplus. So this this triangle right here represents consumer and producer surplus that does not exist because of the regulation. Let's take a look at the original um, consumer surplus. Let me highlight that. The intersection of those, so we have the producer, uh, consumer surplus, and then we have this triangle in here in the top. That is the consumer surplus that no longer exists. The bottom portion here is the original Producer surplus, the large triangle there that's highlighted, let me show it to you right there. That is the original producer surplus. And now there is the new producer surplus, the green triangle on the bottom. So a portion that what occurs is a portion of producer surplus disappears by dead weight loss, the bottom part of this triangle here. And then what occurs is that rectangle there gets converted to consumer surplus. So the area that I've just highlighted right there, that area was producer surplus. 
that is converted into consumer surplus by the fact that the price is lower than the economically efficient level. So make sure you realize this, that when this regulation is put in place, one deadweight loss occurs. Producer and consumer surplus is destroyed. And also what occurs is that a portion of the producer surplus is converted into consumer surplus.